Blacksmith Her Radio, forging blacksmiths together. Buenos dias, balugas. I don't know what that is, but welcome to Blacksmith Her Radio. It is episode number 57. And it's a really great episode because I have Finn and Liam Christie all the way from Dublin, Ireland here on the show. And let me tell you guys, this guy, he is the real deal. He is uh, a blacksmith through and through since the age of nine. He's wanted to blacksmith. His grandfather was said to be one of the best blacksmiths in the country at one time. He worked for the Ireland National Railway System and um, taught a lot of blacksmiths in Ireland. And those blacksmiths ended up actually teaching Finnan how to blacksmith. Okay, let's get into this interview with Finnan. Welcome to Blacksmith the Radio. This is Victoria. I've got Finnan Liam Christie from Ireland. Where in Ireland, Finnan? Dublin? I'm Dublin originally, and I moved to Wexford and set in Southern Ireland about 15 years ago. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you for being here today, by the way. Thank you very much. Uh, let's start with your background and how you started to become a blacksmith. So I heard that you actually started with an apprenticeship with the with Ireland's railway system? Yes, that's right. It would have been with the Great Western Railway. You need to call Wooks in Dublin, in Ireland, back in 1980. And I've done a five-year apprenticeship and uh, working on everything in regardless of the uh, railways, making springs, making parts for the chassis, for brake linkages, gates, everything like that, you know, heavy steel. Wow. Who did you learn with there? Who I would have learned with, let's say, in the last five years of uh, the master blacksmiths of their in five years' time, let's say, they were retiring. And I was a very lucky man, a young lad, I was 15, that they happened, I happened to come in at that time, where I got five years of their actual last five years of their working life, both very, very experienced men. And you know what? They couldn't do enough for me. They couldn't, how to say, I just got, I, I really got a great training off them. They took me under their wings and I couldn't, I was started at 8 o'clock in the morning and come 5 o'clock I was still there and the foreman used to say to me, you're not going home. That's how much I loved it. It was great, you know. I really loved it. Really? Oh, that's great. How many blacksmiths were there teaching you? When I started there, there was about 35 left. Now, there, there used to be uh, two blacksmith shops. There used to be one up the very top of the railway and I think back in the 1950s to close that down because obviously they were getting in new ways of making things and they didn't need as many blacksmiths. But uh, it's 35, but still a lot of blacksmiths. 35 you know? is a lot of blacksmiths. Well, originally there was 5,000 workers in, in the actual railway works in Inchicore. You know, going back when it all started. So, it was a busy place. Wow. Wow. Yeah. From about 9 years of age, I always wanted to be a blacksmith because my grandfather was, he would have been the general form of blacksmith in the the Midland Great Western Radio, radio or Railway, sorry, on the other side of the city. So, actually, the lads, that, the old men that were in the railway where I went, they were actually his apprentices in the other railway. So, the hair dye was coming. Yeah, when the hair dye was coming, that's why they actually turned around and said, are you James Christie's grandson? And I said, I am. And he said, you know what, if you're that much as good as him, you'd be good. And, you know... It was something to look up to, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. What a great training What a, and a good experience. Five years is a pretty good long time to learn a lot of skills. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I learned everything there. Um, to be honest with you, we learned from welding, metal fabrication, but blacksmithing was my main business. Like. But, uh, I, as I say, I couldn't... All I was doing when I started my first year training, I was making tongs, making tools, you name it every tool under the sun, then come at the second year, you'd go, you'd go with a blacksmith, you know, a senior blacksmith, and he'd have you doing little bits every now and again, and then you graduated up to working on your own, you know. But it, it was very exciting times. Now, what did you do after the railway system? 
back in 1985, there was in Ireland the economic downturn was bad at the time, and I remember when I got my <laughs> people laugh at this, but they still come back and say it to me. God, I remember you when you used to travel Dublin on a cycle bike, and I'd have an anvil on the back of my carrier <coughs> of the bike. I'd have an angle grinder across the crossbar, a sledgehammer going across the, the handlebar. I used to knock at every every door in Dublin that had a bent gate, and I would ask them, do you want me to repair your gate? And I'd do it for £5, £10, depending on the site, and I'd do it there and then on the site. And wow. you know what the people would like? In about a year's time, I had my first van. Your first That's what? That's the way I I had my first van, truck. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. But there was no... They were saying there was no work then, but I made work, you know. So I think what happened was you graduated then up to about two years after that that I, I registered my business, and I was starting to get lots of work. So that's how I sort of started there, you know, and I've been working for myself ever since. So. Uh, it all started on a bicycle. I cannot believe Honestly, that. Honestly, yeah, it was great though, you know. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a no, Do you have a, a picture of the bicycle and the anvil in the back? Uh, somewhere, <laughs> I'd have to root it out. <laughs> somewhere. Oh, that would be classic. That would be so great for you to share it. That would be great. Okay, so you've been in business for yourself since 1985, yeah. and um, and a year later you got your first van. And yeah. now your specialty really are uh, railings and gates, is that right? Traditional, the old ways. You know, the way, yeah, mortars, tenons, all that. Now, I could do any work, but traditional railings and gates and anything traditional, that's my speciality, you know. Okay, now, I think I read that you were also the official contractor for the City Dublin of Dublin. City Council? Yeah, Dublin yeah, City Council. for a long time. For a long time. How long? I'd say about 16 years. I actually, yeah, I actually got in there with, with defaults from another lad. He wouldn't go to work for them. And a friend of mine used to stop me every day, and he was awful man for street garden or black garden. And he stopped me, and he says, Finian, will you come down to the council office? We're looking for a blacksmith. I said, Daddy, will never stop. And he's and, and he done it again one day. My mother was in the car, God rest her. And he says, follow me. And he had the inspector, the boss. And I followed him down, and I never looked back till that time, you know, two years ago, <laughs> when it all stopped. But uh, that's the way. Yeah. Wow. wow. Okay, so that's a long time. That's a good uh, business account to have. What did that mean? Were you making railings for, for, the, for the city parks and, and things like that and gates? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say, I don't know if you're familiar with her in Ireland, uh, we call it the Dáil Éireann. It's the government buildings, all the railings, you see all the massive, big, solid railings and gates, all the parks, uh, all the county council houses need a gate, but they'd be all just, uh, I would say, the, the, the lesser gates, the cheap gates, but it would still have to be done. But I've done all the decorative work, all the leaves, everything on the old gates, you know, things like that. Oh, that's great. So you did some restoration as well? Yes. Oh, a lot of restoration. Mm -hmm. A lot of it. Would you know who the original blacksmith was? Uh, no. Because I tell you, he was more or less, a, he was one of their own, the council blacksmith, but because he wouldn't work, they stopped and they subcontracted it out then to me. So I got it all, you know. I ended up with 18 men working for me. Uh, yeah, but I worked myself all the time, as much as any of them did, you know, long hours. Yeah. So you had eight people in your shop? 18. 18. 18? 18. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot to manage. Yeah. So it you was. took on apprentices yourself and... and did you teach? Uh, what I do is, at the moment, in Ireland now at the moment, it's very, very hard to get young lads to do blacksmithing because it's a very heavy and, how would I say, just tedious, the whole thing, but because it's heavy, a lot of the young people are not able to, honestly. Yeah. That's a problem I've had, you know? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever had, like, an experienced apprentice come in? 
and work for you? Uh, no, because there's not many blacksmiths. There is blacksmiths in Ireland, but a lot of them are all self-trained. Any of the ones now, any of the good blacksmiths, they're self-trained, but they're very good. They're all on the west coast of Ireland. Now, there's a company up in Dublin, Butchie Park, Iron Books. They're good lads, but they have, I think, a few foreign lads to come in and they're top class, you know. Czech, Lebaskian and Polish, and they are top class, you know. Yeah. Nice. Do you know um, Michael Budd? I do know Michael well. You do? Lovely chap. I know <laughs> Michael well, up in Mayo. All right. We're all we're all a big party there, big group. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> lovely chap. Michael is a lovely chap. Oh, fun. Okay, so um, tell me this. Do you teach blacksmithing classes out of your shop? I do. Uh, I, I do have, as I say, I've done a couple of demonstrations and I brought people here. And uh, again... I find it hard to get students. It's not because of my work. It's just a lot of people are not, how would I say, it's physical work. And it's a problem. It's a big, big problem in Ireland. You know, I think that the government now has ruined it all because what's happening is the, the, the dole, as they call it, the social welfare system, yes, yes. is still too good for them. Right. They're getting more for lying in bed. Honestly, I'm not afraid to say it. That's what's wrong with the country, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. We have our own issues with the dole as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what kind of classes do you teach? Beginning or intermediate or experienced? I start from the very, very beginning because I do have people coming, a lady and gentlemen, and they would have no knowledge of it at all. Both because they've seen it, they, they feel that they want to do it and they want to learn it. I start from the very basic draw now with a point, a square point. Show them how to sorry how to make from square to round, just the basics first, and work my way up then to twists, easy handles, you know things like that, you know, and then advance as they go along. And are they uh, like a four-hour afternoon? No, they'll be from about ten o'clock in the morning till about half four, so it's, it's a long old day for them, you know. Especially when they haven't been used to standing all day and then swinging a hammer, it's, it's a heavy heavy day. I'm used, to, you know, but they, they wouldn't be God bless them, you know. <laughs> so tell us about your shop. Where uh, is it? How big is it? And, and how many tools do you have in there? My new shop. <laughs> your new shop? My new shop. Yeah, no, uh, to be honest with you, I sort of lost my business. Uh, Dublin City Council stopped everything about three years ago. And I had to cut my cloth to suit, or, you know, to suit everything. And I had to give back. I had rented a big workshop, 3,000 square feet, and I'd done all my work in that, so I had to, it was a big downcome from that. I had a little workshop forged out the back, about 30 by 20, and that's feet, and that's what I work in. But it's a, it's a lovely little forge. I have everything that I need in it, and it was actually the best move I ever done, because I'm working on my own, and I've no overheads, I've no stress. I do job by job, and that's me. You know, if somebody comes in, I'll do a tuition or a lesson for them, you know. And what what other jobs are you taking in, whatever comes through the door? Oh, I take whatever comes in. I make steel doors. I make, as I say, railings, gates. Uh, I forge sculptures, anything like that, you know, anything. But I also do, uh, I'm actually a qualified carpenter as well, believe it or not. Oh, really? So I can do timber gates and... Uh, metric gates all in one combined. Oh, nice. So oh. I was lucky that way, you know. Yeah, that's a great skill to have, along with your your blacksmithing. Yeah. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Like, you had to get rid of a lot of tools to downsize to fit into your new yes. shop. And and you probably wanted to keep some of your favorite tools. Which which ones did you keep? What's what's one of, some of your favorites? <laughs> all my tools are where my favorites, okay? <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know. Unfortunately, when I hit a bad time in the business, I lost a lot of my tools due to, due to how would I say, revenue and things like that. But thank God I was able to keep my blacksmith tools. All right, so how many stations do you have for your students? Do you have a couple anvils and a couple forges? I have three, I have three anvils. And what we do is we have one big coal, coal fire. And I work on that then and I let them just 
give them to, uh, three different times, three different things to be doing, sort of, mm -hmm. where I wouldn't have to treat them walking out with a fire all the time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Great. So I, I usually ask this of most of my interviewees. If you could spend one day with any blacksmith, dead or alive, to train with, who would that be? Dead or alive? My grandfather. Yeah. yeah, right. That's, well, apart from being my grandfather, to say he was one of the greatest in the country. And uh, after he retired in 1969 out of the railway, after doing his full 40 years, he worked for another 13 years for another company. Wow. Till he was set, till he, well, I think he was 79. And that day, he actually died on the job. <gasps> yeah, he was a great man. But the tools, I saw these tools, and some of these tools, you, you can't even see where they were fire welded or anything. They're unbelievable. Work. He was ahead of his time. That's the only problem I ever had. I would have loved him to, I was five when he passed away, but I would have loved him to have been able to see me and be proud of me as well, you know. That, that's, my, that's my main one. Do you have any of his tools? They're treasured. <laughs> yes, yeah? Yeah. I don't, I try not to use them, you know. The more or less a, in a shrine. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And what was his name? James Christie. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, uh, when I asked you to do the interview, you said you were going off to um, go boxing. So you're a boxer too? I do bits of boxing. I've done it for years, you know. Uh, and I do it as a pastime. Yeah. All right. What does that mean? Do you go to a, a local gym and box with the local guys? Yeah, and I have a gym here at the other end of the workshop. So oh. when I finish working, I, I go on the punch bag. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and one of your other hobbies is um, uh, steam engine trains? Yeah, my, I, I build locomotives uh, from, let's say, OO gauge up to seven and a quarter inch gauge and I build them all by hand. Wow. Oh yeah, every bit by hand. <laughs> you know, it's very slow but I love it, you know. That is so cool. Do you have pictures of them? Uh, I have, but I haven't got them on me here at the minute. Yeah, okay. You, you know. Send them to me later. Yeah, we're going to do it. Okay, great. And I understand you're coming to the States for a vacation? Yeah, I'm coming on the 23rd of this month for two weeks, and it's actually, it's a trial, you know, an experiment. Uh, he's trying me out, the, the boss, and I'm staying with the man, and uh, if I'm good enough, he keep me. Really? You know? Who is it? His name is Curtis Herman from uh, Agra in Oklahoma. It's a little small farming community. He's a lovely man. He paid for me fair the whole lot. He was a decent man, you know. Nice. He has an engineering company and uh, uh, he does general metal fabrication and blacksmithing. But I think he wants to he wants to bring his own son. He's a good welder now, but he wants to teach him more blacksmithing. So I think that could be my task. You know? Wow. And so you could be here for a while. Well, I'm going initially. I'm going for two weeks, but if if he likes me and I like him, I could be coming home and going back again. And he's gonna, he's gonna give me, he's gonna sponsor me, you know. Yeah, give you a job. Thanks, God. All right, Finnan, that's exciting. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Now, do you have a a family to move with you? I have, yes, but they're not gonna come yet if we do go. I have five children, and the wife, obviously, and the dog. <laughs> <laughs> he could stay with his. In laws, the dog had. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but they may come over later. Yeah, they've been talking about it. They'd be very interested in coming. I think they're at a, One of the youngest is eight or nine, and the next one then is a little girl. She's uh, thirteen. She's a bit dubious. I think she's all our friends here, you know. But we we talk her around, maybe you know. Better better opportunity in America for them. Right. Yeah. Now, are any of your kids into blacksmithing? I, I did the youngest lad and the third oldest lad. They would like it, you know. 
young as that is nine, and he actually helps me swing the sledgehammer. And I've never seen a young lad so powerful. I would have to tell him, tell him, please, go slow, go easy. He'd break an anvil, honestly. He's a big young lad, you know, for, for nine. Wow. Oh, good. All right. Well, I think that's everything. Thank you so much. Do you want to add anything else, Finan? Uh, just as I say, I, I, I do all types of welding and everything like that. Cast iron welding, fire welding, electric welding, gas welding, all things like that, you know. That's, that's it now. I'm just looking forward to going over and meeting all the great American people and great blacksmiths and hobbyists, you know. Really looking forward to it. Thank you very, very much for your time. You're so welcome and good luck on your travels. And I hope it all works out there in Oklahoma. That's really exciting. Yeah, thank you very, very much. Okay, we'll see you later. All right, thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening to Blacksmither Radio, the only show that features blacksmiths around the world. Visit our website at blacksmither.com slash podcast to view the show notes for this episode. Keep forging on, smithies.